Green is unfrozen. Here we go. Uh, number one, multiple choice. This would also be fair game as a written, although I think to make it worth a written, I would add a mass hanging somewhere else as well. Or instead of saying find the tension, I might have, say find a component of the wall force. We'll talk about how well that's going to work. Meanwhile, I would put the uh, center of mass right there, and thankfully that's straight down. And then I would have tension. Now that can't be the only forces because tension is pulling to the right. In this case, unusually, I think the wall is pulling to the left. Oh, well, that makes sense. If tension's pulling it out from the wall, this would be tugging it into the wall. And I think there'd be a vertical component. But Brandon, because I'm putting my pivot right there, how much torque are these guys going to give me? None, because torque is forced. To... Well, this is not going to give me any torque because it's not perpendicular, it's parallel. And this here is zero from the pivot. So I'm going to start out with my usual, the sum of the torques clockwise equals the sum of the torques counter. Oh, hang on, components, Mr. Duick. I would have to go tension perpendicular and tension parallel. And because this and this are the only horizontal forces, for what it's worth, Zach, if I ever asked you to find the horizontal component of the hinge, really what I'm asking you to find is the parallel component of tension. You'd walk through all the same stuff, but at the end, you'd find tension parallel. Um, see the Z? That's 27 degrees. Okay. The sum of all the torques clockwise in that direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in this direction. Clockwise in this direction would be mg times its distance from the pivot, 3 little hint for your test, by the way, there's going to be one question, at least one, one that I have in mind that I can remember, where, Zach, I didn't put the pivot at the end. I put the pivot somewhere around here, which means even if you're at center of mass, the distance won't be three. You'll have to do a bit of arithmetic to figure out how far am I from the pivot, okay? Uh, and then it's going to be tension perpendicular times its distance from the pivot, and in the interest of saving time, I'll divide by 6 right now. And I get tension perpendicular equals uh, m25, yeah, tw clear, 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 25 times 9.8 times 3 divided by 6, 122.5. Well, I should have been able to do that in my head. Tension perpendicular equals... 122.5. Then I would look at this triangle here and I would say uh, opposite hypotenuse sine of 27 equals tension perpendicular divided by tension. Tension equals tension perpendicular divided by the sine of 27. divided by the sine of 27. You get 128? Is that right? I'm in radians, because I was going, it can't be right. Sine of 27 is going to be around point, sine of 30 is 0.5. It should be an answer twice as big. 122.5 divided by sine of 27. Should be around 250-ish. Yes, 270. B. Now let's stop. How else could I change this question for a test? Nick, it seems to me, see this line here? I could have told you tension. Could you have found tension perpendicular? So you would know that, and you know the six is there. I could have asked you to find the mass of the beam. In other words, another question, same diagram, tell you tension, say, how much does the beam weigh? Beam weigh. I think that's it for twists and turns. Number two, a uniform beam of mass 25 kilogram rests on supports P and Q as shown. What force is exerted by support Q? Well, what are the forces acting? Definitely have the mass of the beam times G. No other mass is hanging on this. So I have force P pushing up, and I have force Q pushing up. And they want me to find force Q. 
So I'm going to put my pivot right there because that's going to make the torque from force P vanish. Now if I go the sum of all the torques clockwise in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in this direction. Clockwise mg times its distance from the pivot. Ooh, I almost wrote 3. It's not 3, is it? Full beam is 8 long, so 4. And that equals force Q times its distance from the pivot, which is 6. So force Q is going to be mg times 4 divided by 6. Uh, 25. Oh, heck, I was going to try and do it in my head. I'm going to use a calculator. You get 163.3 repeating. 163 newtons. Also B. Probably you found the next one, the written question. Oh, yeah, tough. This puppy. What I chose to do was to make a nice big free body diagram because I wanted to really mark this up. You guys could probably write small enough to label this diagram, but if I do that, you guys won't be able to see it. So what I actually did was... You be okay there, Troy? Okay, I drew a long beam. I said, there's my beam. What are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. I said, well, there's going to be the mass of the beam times g. And then there's this mass. Now, I started to put it here, but then my triangles are going to overlap. So, Zach, just to make it easier to keep track of stuff, I moved it down to here. I said, forget about scale. I, I want there to be enough room that I can draw both triangles. Is that okay? So if I redid this diagram again, I wouldn't have it so close to the center. So I called this uh, mass of the load times g. What other forces? Well, this is a bit unusual. We have uh, tension going off this way. I said, OK. It looks like we have our pivot right here. By the way, what do the forces on the pivot have to be? I said, well, this is pulling left. This thing has to be pulling to the right. Has to be. And <clears throat> Dylan, do you notice I got two downwards forces? Do I have any upwards forces? Anywhere else on my diagram right now, do I have any upwards forces? Yeah, in fact, I said, you know what? That plus that is going to equal that. I drew it really big just to let myself know, hey, I'm pretty sure. In, in, in fact, this thing here is experiencing a lot of force, which makes sense. When I looked at this diagram, I thought, yeah, it's getting yanked down. It's getting yanked. Oh, that, that thing's ready to come out of the ceiling. <sighs> Components. I said I want mass of the beam G perpendicular parallel. Mass of the load, G perpendicular, parallel. Tension perpendicular, parallel. Where that's a right angle, that's a right angle, and that's a right angle. The tricky part here, I think, was doing the trig. Here's what I said. Look up. So here is uh, perpendicular, and there's parallel. I added a line. In my mind, I drew this. Can you see the Z? How big is that angle right there? 34. So you ready, Ian? Here's what I said. 38. Is that what it? Yeah, 38. I said, that's 38. What do these two add together to give me? 90. What do these two add together to give me? It's vanishing for them, Mr. Dewitt. They can't see it. What do these two, this one and this one, add to to give me? 
90. And what about this one and this guy next to it? They also add to 90. I said, look, if this is 38, this is 52, this is 38. There may be another way to get there. That's what I did. Anybody come up with something better? Mel, what's your question, kiddo? Okay. There's probably other ways to get there. You probably could have extended a vertical line like this and figured something out. In fact, that probably would have been smarter if you'd done that because then that's 30, that's 50. I don't know. Probably some other stuff you could do. Anyways, I convinced myself that this angle right here was 38 degrees and this angle right here was 38 degrees and huh? So I went back to this drawing and I said, okay, here's perpendicular, there's parallel. Oh, I said, if I extend the beam just a little bit, how big is this angle? 38, how big is that angle? 38 for a candy. Does anybody remember what you called that rule last year? Corresponding. Corresponding angles were ones that would slide down like snakes and ladders and overlap with the angle further on down the same ray, the same line, the same segment. Anyways, this is 34, and once I had that, I said, ooh, I see a Z. 30, I said 34 again. This is 38. Once I saw that, I had a Z. I said, okay, this bad boy is 38 degrees. Whew. That's about as tough as a geometry section as you're going to get. Probably a little tougher than you're going to get. Now I was ready to do the torques. The sum of all the torques clockwise in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in this direction. Here's my pivot, kind of unusual. What would cause the pivot to spin clockwise? Clockwise. I said, you know what? The only thing, tension. Tension perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. It's the whole length of the beam from the pivot, uh, 3.2. That equals the mass of the load times g perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. They told me this is 0.9. They told me this is 0.9. So how far is this distance here? How can I figure it out? 3.2 minus 0.9, right? The whole beam is 3.2. The length is 0.9. So 3.2 minus 0.9, 2.3? Yeah, people nodding. 2.3. And... The mass of the beam times g perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Oh, center of mass, 1.6. <sighs> I'll get tension perpendicular by itself. In other words, I'm going to divide this whole thing by 3.2. And I said, these two triangles here, these two triangles... They are identical. I'll figure out which trig function it is in the first one. It'll be the same in the second one. I said, uh, let's see, Mr. Doek. This is adjacent hypotenuse. Which trig function? Cos. It's cos in both. You may have noticed, Evan, if you've done a bunch of these, that usually the mass hanging from an angled beam or gravity hanging from an angled beam is usually cos. Not always. It really depends on what angle they give you. And today we're going to do an example where it turns out to be sine, but usually it's cos. So this is going to be mass of the load times g times the cosine of 38. And then don't forget to drop the distance down. Plus mass of the beam times g times the cosine 38. And don't forget to drop the distance down. Time for my trusty calculator. Uh, I've forgotten the masses, Mr. Duick. Five kilograms, 2.4. Okay. 2.4 times 9.8 times 2.3. Well, times 
cosine of 38 degrees times 2.3 and 5 times 9.8 times cos of 38 times what was the distance for the 5 kilogram mass of the bean 1.6 Double check, 2.4, 9.8, cos 38, 2.35, 9.8, cos 1.6, divided by 32. And I get tension perpendicular is point, uh, 3.2628. Pardon me? I divided by 3.2, and I wanted to divide by, I divided by 32, and I should have divided by 3.2. So is it 32.6275? 32.628. Tension equals here, Mr. Duick, times 10. Is that it? Okay. 32.628. But that's tension perpendicular. Tension. Let's see. Which trig function? Opposite hypotenuse sine 38 equals perpendicular over tension. And again, you may not have noticed that it's been almost always sine to find the tension from the perpendicular. Not always, usually. Tension is going to be perpendicular divided by sine 28 equals divided by sine 28. Tell me you get 69.5. times the sine of 28. Let's go back to where I started from here. Divided by the sine of 38. Tell me you get 53. Woohoo! 53 newtons. Oh. If you got that wrong, you don't get full marks. How would I give out part marks? Oh, probably something like this. I would give you one mark if I saw that. One mark if I saw that. Two marks if I saw that. Four, five, six, seven. Probably something like that. Pardon me? Yes, what I would like you to do is give your... Is that a five? Not out of seven. It's out of five. Even easier. Then I would probably go... I would probably go one mark for that. Come on, pen. One mark for that, and one mark for that, one mark for that. In answer to your question, Vitaly, so that makes this whole quiz, strangely enough, out of nine, since multiple choice for some reason in physics is worth two marks apiece. What I would like you to do is, as we've done occasionally, the person on the end of each row, get out a piece of paper, write down your name, write down your score, and pass it down. But I'd like you to be able to hang on to these to study from, because I won't see you between now. I see you Wednesday, but if I don't get these back to you Wednesday, then you don't have them to study from. I don't know. So lesson five, number one, for those of you who are watching at home. A uniform 15 kilogram pipe of five meters has 160 Newton force applied four meters from its lower end as shown using the point where the pipe touches the ground as the pivot. So this time they're telling me where I have to put the pivot. Calculate the sum of the torques acting on the pipe. This is a bit of a twist, Nick, because this is not an equilibrium. This is not going, oh, sum of the torques clockwise equals sum of the torques counterclockwise. They're not balanced. And I can tell they're not balanced because I glanced at all four answers and none of them was zero. So here, instead of doing my clockwise equals counterclockwise, I think all I'm going to do is figure out the total number of torques clockwise, how much? the total amount of torque counterclockwise, and then I'm going to go bigger minus smaller. Whatever's left over tells me which way it's fitting. So I picked this one. I thought it was a nice twist, though, and instead of equilibrium, this thing is spinning. I want to know which way. Is that force enough to get it to spin upwards and to the left, or is its mass enough, so even if they're pulling, to still have it pull it down to the ground? So I'm still going to start out the same way by saying, hey, what are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Mg, center of mass. What else? Tension. Now, tension is pulling to the left. 
I'm almost positive that this hinge here then is pushed. In fact, I am positive. This hinge is pushing to the right. There may also be an upwards or a downwards force right there. This is multiple choice, so I don't care about what the free body diagram looks like anyways. So even though I've talked about it, I'm not going to worry about it. I am definitely, though, going to have to go components. Perpendicular. I know this is parallel. You may have noticed, Taylor, I don't often label parallel unless I need it, because the less I label, the less confusing the diagram is. And mg perpendicular, and there's the parallel. And I'm going to zoom into this diagram a little bit here. Let's see. Ready, Brandon? How big is this angle right here? Yep. How big is this angle? 90, 34. How big is this angle? How big is this angle here? How big is this angle? Tell me exactly in your head how big that angle has to be. How do we know? How about just 90 minus 34? Because 180 minus 90 is 90, right? This is 90. These two got to add to 90 as well for the triangle to add to 180. So in your head, 90 take away 34. No excuses. What do you got? 56. So you said this is how big? 56. What do these two angles add together to form? Look at them. These two angles here, 90. So that means the whole point of this, my friend, was to realize this angle here is 34 degrees as well. This one's a little easier, Brandon. See it? 42, how big? Yep. OK. So this one, because, Miguel, they've told me that we are not balanced. You see how you can pick that up from the question? It does not say equilibrium. Instead, it says find the sum of the torques. I'm going to find torque clockwise first. Torque clockwise equals what would cause this to spin in this direction? mg perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. How far is it from the pivot? 2.5. Which trig function is perpendicular going to be? Cos. The torques clockwise end up being mg cos of 34 times 2.5. And that's the mass of the beam. Let's crunch that, please. Can you get your calculators out and go mass 15. 15 times 9.8 times cosine of 34 times 2.5. I get 304.7. Units, Newton, meters. Direction, clockwise. What's the sum of the torques counterclockwise? Well, what force would cause it to spin this way? Tension is wrong. Perpendicular. Let's not make that mistake. That's the most common mistake. So I'm going to go uh, the torques counterclockwise ends up being tension perpendicular times how far is it from the pivot? Let's see, whole beam is 5, that's 1, 4. By the way, which trig function could I use to find tension perpendicular? Kyle, okay. So tension perpendicular is going to be tension times the sine of 4, sine of 4, Mr. Duick, sine of 42 times 4. The perpendicular, oh, sorry, the perpendicular torque, the counterclockwise torque, is going to be 160 times the sine of 42 times 4, 428.2.
Which is bigger, counterclockwise or clockwise? So who's winning? Can't be spinning that way, can't be spinning that way. It's got to be spinning counterclockwise, because that's winning. This is not in balance. This is not an equilibrium. Yeah, you know what? If you go 428 minus 305, you get about 120. I'm pretty sure the answer is C, bigger minus smaller. So trying to think of different ways that can give you a multiple choice question with a twist, here's an example of one. Okay. Lots of other good examples of the kinds of multiple choice questions you'll see in your big review, so make sure you work on that. I will say I'm having a lot of people handing those reviews in five or six or eight days after the actual test. I hope those of you that are doing the reviews before the test, are you finding they're helpful? Yeah, so rest of you, like easiest way to raise your test grade, do the review before the test. Second easiest way, do the homework. Third easiest way, give me $10,000. Hmm? Fourth easiest way, pay attention during class and don't show up late. Okay. Example two. A beam question, but uh, with a twist. This time, they want you to find the mass of the student. Instead of giving you all the masses and saying, find the torque or find the force or find the tension, here, find the mass. OK. I'm still going to start out by uh, labeling my forces. So what are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Pardon me? OK. And I'll put that center of mass. Mass of the beam times G. What else, Ian? Mass of the student. Times G. What else? That can't be it, otherwise it would be falling into the ground. Okay. And this one's a bit interesting. Because they told me what the scale read, what does the scale read? Forces come in pairs. If the beam is pushing down with 350 newtons, what must the scale be pushing back up at? So this is their way of giving me a force without being blatant about it. And I think there's one or two of these in the review as well. There's at least one I know where they have an object sitting on a scale, and they tell you either find the scale measurement or they tell you the scale measurement. And you know what? I'm pretty sure... There's another force right there. I'll call it Fy for force up. But I don't care about it, because how far is it from the pivot? Zero. Does this question suggest that this beam is moving at all? No, in fact, looking at this picture, I'm pretty sure this is an equilibrium. So now we're going to use our standard torque approach. The sum of all the torques clockwise in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in this direction. Uh, clockwise. So here's my pivot right here. Clockwise would cause it to spin this way. Which force or forces would do that? I think, yeah, both the masses. So it's going to be the mass of the student times g times how far is it from the pivot? 1.2 plus the mass of the beam times g times 1.5, half the center of mass, equals three hundred and fifty times its distance from the pivot three. What am I trying to find here? So I think, Brandon, leave this, minus this over, and then divide by both of those, and that should me, get me that by itself. Yeah? I'm going to do that in one step. So the mass of the student is going to be the mass of the beam times g times 1.5. No, Mr. Duick, you're minusing that over, Mr. Duick. It's going to be this, 350 times 3 minus the mass of the beam times g times 1.5. And then divide that answer by a G 
and a 1.2. That should get the student by itself. What did we say the mass of the beam was? 25. 350 times 3 minus 25 times 9.8 times 1.5 divided by 9.8 times 1.2. Is that right? 58? Fifty eight kilograms C. Before we turn the page, how else could I change this question? Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So this was a twist here, Miguel. I said find the mass. Or could I have told you her mass and this and have asked you to find where she's standing? In other words, on this line here, could I ask you to put an X right there? Yep. I'd feel good about that. Okay, And I would have no problem not putting the pivot on the end, maybe putting the pivot right here so she's balancing it like a teeter-totter. Okay. Just means your distances would change, right? Now turn the page. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Yep. Yep. So we've seen a picture like this before, but Vitaly, read very carefully. What do they want me to find in this question? That's the trick to this question. The horizontal force where? From what? Do you see it in the diagram where the horizontal force is? Find it. Okay. This is a question I would consider fair game as a hinge force. We did a couple in our homework where I actually asked you to find the horizontal and the vertical and add them together, tip the tail, and find the resultant. That's a little overkill to me. But asking you to find the horizontal or the vertical component of the hinge is not too bad. And you'll see when we label this. Is this a nice big diagram? Then I think I'm going to label the diagram and not redraw it. What are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Okay, we have gravity. Mass of the beam times G. What else? Mass of the load times G. And I like both of these, Aaron, because holy smokes, they're perpendicular. No components. What else? Definitely tension. Which way is tension pulling? What two directions? Up and left. And as soon as you said left, I said, that can't be the only forces then because there's a force to the left and it's not accelerating to the left. There's my horizontal force pushing to the right. Is what I'm trying to find. And I'm pretty sure that this is pushing upwards. Actually, my last class we had more time we solved for this and we found tension is pulling so hard that as it turns out this is end up pushing downwards but we're not going to worry about that because how far is it from the pivot zero how can I find FH I can't yet but I gotta do something else to my free body diagram which force do I need to find a component for Okay, here's perpendicular. Here's parallel. Does anybody see, Vitaly, I'm going to argue and I'm going to say, really, this question does not want me to find FH, the horizontal component. Which force is this question really wanting me to find? Tension parallel because those two are equivalent to each other. Did I say I like this question? Okay. So Evan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use torques to find tension parallel, and then at the end I'll say that equals FH. 
Oh, sorry, I'm going to use Torx to find perpendicular, but once I know this, I can do some basic trig and find that. Uh, angles. Oh, see the Z? 48. So I'm going to start out the same way as we have before. The sum of all the torques clockwise that's in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise that's in that direction. If that's my pivot point, my hinge, which force or forces would cause it to spin clockwise? Mass of the beam times G times its distance from the pivot. 3, not 2, 3. Plus the mass of the load times G times 6. That equals the perpendicular component times 4. What's the mass of the beam? 32 times 9.8. No need for components because we're already good. Times 3. Plus mass of the load, 93 times 9.8 times 6. If I divide that by 4, that will give me tension perpendicular. Once again, strongly encourage you to follow along on your calculators in this unit. Most common mistakes is calculator mistakes. divided by 4. And I get the perpendicular component 1602.3. Anybody else? Yep. Tension perpendicular equals 1602.3. And that's a force, so it's newtons. I'm not trying to find tension perpendicular. Vitaly, what did this question want us to find? I got not, uh, not hinge. Horizontal force, okay, the horizontal force. And I said to you, I can't find it. What does this question really want me to find? Sorry? Parallel. Okay, so I know perpendicular, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. So here's one where we're not using sine at the very end. As it turns out, which trig function are we using, Matt? Tan of 48 equals opposite over adjacent. Tension perpendicular, which equals fx, is going to be Sorry, tension parallel, which equals fx, is going to be perpendicular divided by tan 48. And conveniently, I have perpendicular on my calculator. Divided by tan 48. And I get 1442.3. Ooh, sig figs. 1440. Newtons. Boy, I got the yawns. Wake up, Mr. Dick. Is that okay, Mel? Question? No? Okay. Again, trying to show you different ways I can tweak these and make them either a little bit trickier or a little bit easier. This one a little bit trickier. Is it 1440? People nodding? Okay. Turn the page! I like number four, I like number four, I like number four. So, question four, we have a beam at an angle and a rope at a different angle. 
fact, I would argue this is very, very similar to the question, the last question on your take-home quiz. There, the beam was at a yucky angle, and the rope was not parallel to the beam or perpendicular to the beam. So here we go. What are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Mass of the beam times G. Mass of the load times G. Tension. I, I doubt that's it. In fact, I'm almost, well, I know since tension is pulling left, I'm pretty sure the hinge is pushing right. And probably pushing up as well. Now what? Components. Mass of the beam, G perpendicular, and mass of the load, G perpendicular, and tension perpendicular. one's a little weird. Ready, Mel? Let's see how we do. Be good. See the Z? 75. How big? Ready? How big was this one here? See the other Z? Bottom left. Bottom left this time. I don't think we ever used that one, but I said to you, usually it's cosine. I think it's going to be a different trig function this time. I try and use the angle that they gave me. You don't have to. You could have up here used uh, 15. Um, I just want my answers to look like their answer keys. and I'll mark yours fine. I'll grumble a bit and do it on a scrap piece of paper, or probably by this time I have both on my answer key. And I'm pretty sure this is also 75. This one's a little easier. Torques. The sum of all the torques clockwise in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in that direction. All right, clockwise. I got to be really, really fussy perpendicular components of the masses, okay? Mass of the beam G perpendicular times its distance from the pivot, which is going to be the beam is 6 meters long, 3, plus mass of the load times G times its distance from the pivot, uh, 6, equals, what's going to spin it counterclockwise? Tension perpendicular times its distance from the pivot, which is how far? Oh, four. They gave me that. Ah! Better? OK. Alyssa glances down. No, she's OK. Sorry, but I got to teach. Um, which trig function? 
Yeah, this time it's going to be opposite hypotenuse. It's going to be sine. It's going to be mass of the beam G sine of 75 times 3 plus mass of the load G sine of 75 times 6. That equals tension perpendicular times 4. I'm going to divide by 4 right now. What does tension perpendicular end up being when you go mass of the beam times g times sine 75 plus 3? Sorry, times 3 plus the mass of the load times g times sine 75 times 6 divided by 4. Let's see, Mr. Duick. Beam is 25, 85. Okay, I can get this. Twenty-five times nine point eight sine seventy-five times three and eighty-five times nine point eight times sine seventy-five times six. One three eight four point four one three. Is that my final answer? What does this question want me to find? OK, let's go back to this triangle and let's say to ourselves, all right, which trig function? Um, opposite, hypotenuse, sine of 67 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is going to be tension perpendicular over sine of 67. Uh, that answer divided by sine of 67. You get 1504? Oh, sig figs. 1500. Newtons. I'm trying to remember, have I showed you the slow motion balancing movie? The guys, everything's backwards, in reverse? Okay. Turn the page. And we've done the Penn and Teller magic trick. Yes, the trick truck. Penn and Teller? Number five, a similar question. This is actually on my other version of the test, but there's one sort of like this on yours. We have a board, and it's just laying down on those two rests. And we have this bird. It's slowly walking further and further to the right, and eventually it's going to walk so far to the right, Taylor, that that board is going to tip. So A is asking, what maximum distance, x, from the right-hand support can a 1.2 kilogram bird walk before the board begins to leave the left hand support? I don't know. I don't know either. Suggestions? Label my diagram. Absolutely. What are the forces acting here? Get the obvious ones. Oh, oh by the way, are any of my pivots going to be right at the end? So let's be really careful when we're doing distances not to get in the habit of just, how far from the end of my the pivot goes? Here, they're in the middle. I'm probably going to move around a little bit. So what are the forces? Well, definitely have mass of the bird times g. What else? Mass of the bridge. How long is the bridge? 2.6. I'll eyeball the center of mass, 1.3. Um, I'll call it M1G because 
B and bridge and B and bird begin with the same letter. Can that be all? No, why not? Sorry? Yeah. So, um, put your pencils down. Here's the most common mistake. Kids do this, F right, and then they do this, F left. And the reason that that's incorrect is if I mathematically put my pivot there, don't write this down, but if I mathematically put my pivot there, what direction is this wanting to torque? Clockwise or counterclockwise? What direction is this wanting to torque? What direction is this wanting to torque? Clockwise. You might not have balanced torque. In fact, you don't have balanced torques. Here's my argument. As you walk further and further and further out, what happens to this plank? In fact, the equilibrium point is when it's just lifting off. And I'm going to argue if it's just lifting off, if that's the maximum distance, that is zero. Is zero. It just wants to lift off airy, so there's nothing holding it down. And there's no force pushing it up if it just lift, does lift off for a split second. There's no more normal force. We're talking about that threshold right there. Is that okay? Yeah? Let's go yell at people in the hallway. Let's go see who that is. Silly people. Just my very presence. But do you see the argument here? What, what I'm saying is, if this is just about to tip, that's just about to lift off the ground right there, because it's clearly going to pivot right here. If it's just about to lift off the ground right there, what's my net force for that split second? Nothing down, nothing up. It's just about to become weightless. Is that okay, Nick? Nice little twist here. I don't know if any of you ever walked out. Like when you were a kid, if they had a big long plank, how far could you walk out before it started to tip or something? That's what we're talking about here. Or even if you've been standing on a piece of wood that was balanced, and you can move over and get it to hit back down on the ground again, and then balance it back in the middle again like a teeter-totter, and move over to get it hit back down again. What we're really saying then is, where is that equilibrium point? Okay. Sorry, folks. A bit of a delay there. Torques. Now here's the nice thing about this question. Components, yes or no? How about here? How about here? And in fact, I'm going to put my pivot right here. And all I'm going to have then is, since that's zero, the sum of the torques clockwise equal the sum of the torques counterclockwise. If that's my pivot, and this is zero. Clockwise, 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 clockwise. Which force? Okay. Mass of the bird times g times how far from the pivot? Yeah, what are we going to put there? Look at the diagram. Oh, x. That equals counterclockwise. The mass... I'll call it mass 1, the mass of the beam, but I already used B for bird, times G times... Now here's where you got to be careful. You have to do a little bit of thinking. How far is it from the pivot? A lot of people, Taylor, will just go, oh, 2.6, center mass 1.3. Well, that's only if the pivot's at the end, and it's not. How long is the whole beam? 2.6. So here's the question. How far from here to here? From here to here. Taylor, 1.3. That is half of the distance center of mass. Real question I want to figure out is, what's that distance? So let's see. 
what's the total distance from here to here? 1.8. And you told me this distance was what, Taylor? So what's this? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Okay? From here to here is 1.8. From here to here is 1.3, center of mass. From here to the pivot, which is where we put it, 0.5. For me? For me? How far from here to here? So where am I going to put the mass of the beam always? Center of mass. So it's going to be 1.3 from either end. Problem is our pivot's not on the end. We're going to have to do some tweaking of the numbers here. Okay? So I knew this was 1.3 and 1.3 because it's our mass. But then I said, oh, from here to here is 1.8. From here to here is 1.3. What's left? I'm going to give you at least one diagram on your test. We're going to have to kind of move stuff back and forth and add a little line or two and figure it out. Okay? Having said that, fairly nice equation. X is going to be mass of the beam times G times 0.5 divided by mass of the bird times G. Mass of the beam, 0.75 times 9.8 times 0.5 divided by mass of the bird, 1.2? That's a huge bird. And then some. Oh, I also noticed something else. What cancels? Now, what that means is if you were to somehow magically transport this to the moon, it would still be the same distance the bird could walk out. Or if you transported it to Mars or to Jupiter, wherever in the universe, that distance is not going to change. It doesn't depend on the gravitational field. It just depends on the ratios of the masses to each other. So this is going to be 0.75 times, try that again, 0.75 times 0.5 divided by 1.2, come on, 1.2. And I get 0.3125, x equals 0.31. Units, meters. You can walk out 31 centimeters, and that's just past 31 centimeters is when the whole thing will start to tip. B. How many marks is part B worth? Two. Two? Do you think they want me to go big torque question? In fact, I think we can just say this. The force is up equal the force is down. Because it's in equilibrium because it says it just wants to start to move but it hasn't started moving yet. What are the forces up? Only one. Force right. What are the forces down? Look, what about the force on the left? Ah, we said at that split second, it's zero. So it's going to be 0 0.75 times G plus 1.2 times 9.8. And I get 19.1 newtons. Is that okay? Turn the page. Okay. We're not done, by the way. I should have said, by the way, in part A, uh, are we okay? Oh, we are okay. Never mind. Which one was the one that was bugging me? Oh, number five here. I don't know, when did I say the test was several times? There you were. No, no. What, test for math or for physics? 
Yeah, I already said it today. I think. Did I not? Pretty sure. Yeah, you came a little bit late, but I think I announced it after you came here. No? Okay. Hey, look up. I'm going to argue that this diagram here, this idea where they're asking you to find the distance, very similar to this one here. You guys are zoning out on me. There's about 10 minutes left. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to work on the big review, and that's your homework. I'm not going to do example six. If you want to find example six, the lesson, the video lesson online has it done. You can try it there. Okay? So I'm just going to say homework, work on unit review. Matt, Taylor. Matt, Taylor. Okay. I'm also I'm doing a formal one today where I've cleared my calendar just for the physics kids. Uh, I'm also going to be around Wednesday and Friday. Yes, you may. <laughs>